Hey guys, how's it going? Today it's beautiful. The sun is shining. It's cold. I've got snow boots on and there was a nice layer of frost on everything this morning. Uh, but we've got a bunch of tulip bulbs to plant and I wasn't going to subject you to another bulb planting video, but this one's going to be a little bit different in that most of these bulbs or as many of them as possible are going to be going in containers that we have scattered around the garden already. We might even move some containers around the Hartley. I'm a little bit uh, hesitant about that because I don't know if I want to start moving stuff into that area yet. I don't know. Maybe we'll try it and see if we like the way they look there. We may end up moving them out. I just love to see the structure itself without a bunch of stuff around it. So we'll see. Jury's still out on that one. But whatever we have left at the end of the day is going to come out here to the cut flower garden. I'm planning on putting it in the first row that's closest to the driveway. So this one right here, this is where we planted all the ranunculus and anemones last year in these two rows. So I'll bump those over and we'll have a nice spring show right here in the row closest to the driveway so we can really see it. And we really do have a lot of beautiful tulips. I did attempt to do a bunch of bulb planting yesterday. I didn't end up having as much time as I was hoping to get that done, but I used the leftover clear water and sauna tulips that we have around the Hartley. I think we had just over a hundred combined of those two varieties. So I used up the rest of those along the west side walkway as well as 300 best purple. I had ordered those to go in front of the Hartley. We were, we were going to do two formal beds right in front, like two boxwood rectangles, and then I decided to forego that idea, but I think that those will look beautiful over there. So let's run through these varieties and where I got them because I think four different places are where these bulbs came from. Most of them are from Color Blends, uh, which I shared with you in a previous video. So we have Dordonia, which is a pink with orange. We have Akebono, Bono, Akebono, which I planted before, which is pale yellow with a red and green kind of margin. We've got is it Johan Kruf, Kruf? Yellow with pink turning white. We've got Averon, which are a gorgeous double rose colored tulip. Love these. Uh, we've got several, like maybe 250 of the Angelique double light pink. We've got Hella Lights, which is a yellow and Blushing Lady, which is yellow with rose. And then from my parents' garden center, I picked these up the other day. They are the Design Impression Darwin Hybrid. They have variegated foliage, kind of like the Purissima Blonde, except for, you know, these have more of a white variegation instead of yellow and then a pink bloom. There's only 10 of these, so that'd be easy. One of you guys sent us these bulbs in this package, and it says it's from Sarah Diana Melissa. So thank you, you guys, for sending these out. Um, there's a purple peony double late tulip, a dance line double late tulip, and a foxy foxtrot double early tulip. I need to Google these and see what they look like, but I'm excited. I love doubles, so that'll be fun. Looks like those came from American Meadows. From Dutch Grown, I have 200 brownie tulips. I had just a small handful of the brownies behind the gazebo before we you know, started taking that area apart. And I really wanted to make sure I ended up with more of them in the landscape. They're gorgeous. And then also from Dutch Grown, we have 100 of the white parrot tulips and 25 salmon parrot. Hey, Russell, what are you doing? Oh, he's leaving. And then from Brent and Becky's bulbs, I have Copper Image, a whole bunch of those, and Amazing Grace which I'm excited to see what this one looks like up against the Averon. They look sort of similar, but we'll see. So we have a lot of beautiful things to look forward to this next spring. And I do the planting pretty much the same, except for it's gonna be easier. I don't have to use the auger to make a million holes in the ground. We'll do a lot of it at standing uh, height because they're containers. I plant them at the same depth, five to six inches deep, but I put them a lot closer together. So they might be touching each other. That way you get a full, beautiful, like bouquet effect. And then at the end of the season, you can let the uh, tulips stay there until you're ready to plant your summer annuals. At that point, you can pop them out in the landscape. If the foliage hasn't died back all the way, just leave the foliage on until it does and then clean it up. Um, usually they're just fine in that transfer process. We might have to do some container moving first because I think we're still dealing with a little bit of frozen soil right here at the entrance to the cut flower garden. Yeah, there's no way I'm getting, eh, it's starting to thaw out a little bit. And those containers out there were the ones I was thinking of moving to the Hartley, but I think I might miss them out there. They're really the only things that are indicating where the openings are over here because the grass isn't super strong in those spaces yet. I'll show you close up. So this was newly planted kind of early fall. 
and it came up pretty nicely but you know we can't really I shouldn't even really be walking on it uh, it'll pick up in the spring and start growing and filling in a lot thicker and then we will reseed this area too in the spring we need to adjust some sprinklers because this spot right here needs to have water from both these sprinklers and these over here um, that's why it never came in super thick but the pots out here you know, I need to line them up a little bit better and, and level them, but they really are nice indicators as to where the opening to this garden is. And I kind of like that. But if we filled these full of bulbs and had them at the four corners of the Hartley, we would actually see them more, uh, you know, through the course of the winter. And I would put branches and greens and stuff on top of the bulbs and we'd have some nice winter display as well. But like I said, we'll try it out uh, and then we'll just go from there. We may end up moving them right back to where they are. So we'll start with one. I think Aaron's gonna come out here with the tractor so that we can just pick it up and move it a little bit easier. And you guys, I will try to do a much better job at showing you how things turn out in the spring. I know I fell down on it this spring, big time. I noticed in the comments there was a couple of you who were like, you know, I'm here watching the bulb planting, which is great, but I really want to see what they look like in the spring. Uh, so we will try to do multiple tours. That's the thing with the bulbs. You know, a lot of these, even the tulips, there are some that will bloom earlier, some that are mid-season, some that are late season, so they won't all be blooming at the same time. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, I love having this succession of color, but oh, it would be so glorious to walk out and see all the bulbs blooming all at one time. That's just not the way it goes, but I do plan on doing a better job at that this spring so that your effort in watching this video will not be for nothing. You'll get to see the results. Wanted to stop here real quick and show you another option. These are a little bit smaller, these pots. I've got four of these as well. Two are right here in front of what we, I think are gonna call the Persephone Garden. You guys were awesome in the comment section. We were talking about renaming this garden from Versailles because that's just what it was from the previous owners to the balcony garden because this is where the balcony is. But many of you guys mentioned that you don't really see the balcony usually in the shots that we show of this garden. You see the Persephone statue. So we might just call it that. Anyway, uh, I've got two here and then two in front of the greenhouse that might work as well. They are more decorated. There's a lot more detail on them. So I'm not sure if I want to put something like that or something cleaner. So like those that we just looked at. And this is where we're thinking of putting them, right here on either side. So they'll tuck in right next to the cold frame here, right in this space, and then we'll mirror it on the back, which it looks a little different because there's no cold frames, uh, but the other one will be right here. Oh good, the forks are already on the tractor. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> so we'll just grab this one first, I guess? I think so. Whew. It's chilly in the shade, you guys but we're starting to thaw out a little bit. Wonder how this one is in the sun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I can dig down in this one easy. Perfect. Yeah, Aaron and I were just talking about, you know, losing the structure out here with the pots, but he agrees. He's just said, you know, we should move them. We'll see him more up there with winter arrangements and then we can move them back out here or get something different for this space out here if we really, really like what they look like around the Hartley. I completely forgot that we were planning to empty out all of the soil out of these containers because we've had the same soil in them for at least two growing seasons uh, because they are large containers. We typically just replace the top, but I think it's time to replace all of it. Um, all of these containers this year struggled with aphids and I don't know, I don't want to perpetuate that. And if we put fresh soil in now, it's a perfect opportunity because there's nothing in them. And next spring, we won't have to mess with it. We'll just be able to enjoy the bulbs, pop those out, and then plant our new stuff in there. I need to go grab a shovel out of the barn, and then we'll get the soil emptied. Ooh, look at that. Let me, let me help. There you go. Aaron took out what the first 12 14 inches of soil yeah. and it looks pretty good down below it's I don't know that lofty. yeah I don't think we're gonna take all of it out because we got past that root ball layer and yeah it looks like fresh soil for the most part I mean we will recharge it with biotone before we add fresh 
but I think we've got past the point of any insect eggs. Yeah. Do you have your Felcos on you? I do not. All right. Well, we're we going to replace get, the brown, right? Yeah, get rid of the brown part of this. Okay. I'll grab them when we get closer. We're going to take this one over to the Hartley now. My goodness I love these containers I love them this is the perfect size and perfect design I think because they're beautiful but they're simple you know they're not distracting in their design they've got a few ribs around them but that's it they just tuck in beautifully that's exactly what I was imagining and honestly I don't think that we could have got away with a smaller container they need to be able to stand up for themselves in a space like this you know they need to be able to be seen while not just be distracting and that's what I was unsure of but I did not even realize either how visually disrupting they were out in the south garden when we removed them it was like this kind of weight was being lifted and the the view was opening up and they were just sitting there kind of distracting from everything that was going on there and i just i'm so pleased just with the whole the whole move of these pots i love it now i have to run out to the south garden because one of the great big trees that we picked out at malad tree farm just arrived they dug the hole for it maybe two weeks ago and then we had really bad weather last week so they took a break um, and now They've got it here. I'm so excited about it. Look at that beauty. A Norway spruce. We need to get out here and finish this pathway I quick. Know, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> you know, we might be able to work on it tomorrow. These are pretty solid. Yeah, they are solid. It's because we leveled each one as we went. See how nice that is? are getting the tree placed and I cannot wait to see what it looks like once it's in its hole we are gonna work on getting these pots done which is gonna be so easy uh, because all I need to do is put a little bit of soil in just enough to where the tulip bulbs will be about five to six inches deep we'll sprinkle a little bit of biotone starter fertilizer line up our bulbs and then top them up with fresh soil I'm gonna mix two different varieties the blushing ladies I have 25 per pot so I have 100 total and they're a yellow pink bicolor and they grow about 26 to 30 inches tall and then the Johan tulips grow about 14 to 16 inches tall and that's what I'll surround each one of those with and I have 300 of those so I'll divide that by four and that's how many will go in each one of the, the pots I think it's going to be really nice and by the time this is done we're late enough in the day now because we've had to stop several times that um, the rest of the soil and the rest of the pots should be more thought out I hope what we're looking like 25 blushing ladies in the center which they are a little bit bigger of a bulb and we put pointy side up 
and then the Johans along the perimeter. That looks great. Also, this right here. They're digging a hole to move a crab apple that we planted back here, a, a four trunk crab apple is gonna be moved right up here and we're planting a great big green Colorado spruce back here. I didn't realize they were coming today, so it's super fun to see all the activity around here. Okay guys, the next containers we're gonna plant today with the white parrot tulips are these right here. And they're pretty darn frozen. So I'm gonna have to go get some warm water to soften up the soil. And they are working on Christmas lights right next to me, but I'm gonna try to not show you what they're doing so that it's a surprise when we do our Christmas light tour. And you guys, it's shaping up to be a good one this year. All right, guys, we are getting toward the end of the day at this point. We got a lot done and I have a lot to show you. We'll walk through everything except for the Hartley area since we already kind of walked through that together when I got those pots done. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am with those, uh, but a lot of tree moving got done today as well. Like we had a few trees that we had already planted, picked up and moved um, just to kind of just retool some flower bed areas. So I'll walk you through those. Now the tulips I have left are mainly just the copper image and the brownies, and that's not enough to make a, an entire row in the cut flower garden so those I will just pop into the landscape as I have time uh, through hopefully this next week hopefully by the end of the week I have all of our bulb planting checked off the list I still have to plant the crocus and the scillas and hyacinths probably won't do that in a video but you never know okay we're gonna kind of work backwards here these are the pots I ended with we had echinacea and potato vine and super tunias in here this summer and they did really well kind of had a little bit of a soil issue <laughs> right there but I put Amazing Grace and Angeliques no just Amazing Grace I think I spread them out a little bit further and I did 25 in each of these pots I think that will look really sweet next containers are that way you know what though before we get too far we did have a Katsura tree uh, some of you might remember it we planted it in the back of the south garden kind of on 
the north side of the south garden and it did not thrive so that one uh, we had dug out today and then we had a shade master honey locust that we planted in the grassy area in the big lawn uh, and we planted that before we decided to go ahead with the autumn blaze along the outer part so we left it there even though it was like I don't know six feet away from the autumn blaze and people probably thought we were crazy for planting two huge trees right close together uh, but we had intended to the whole time once the tree went dormant we wanted to have it moved so that's what we did we had the katsura picked up removed and the shade master pop in its spot so right there so that one was over there in the corner. I, Aaron and I planted that one, oh boy, was it this spring? It did really well. So I think it's gonna be great in this location right here. Just perfect. I'm overall happy with this whole side of the flower bed. I kind of focused a lot on that. You can tell the areas that I focused on and the areas that I just kind of popped things randomly here and there with a lot of space between, but this one is really thickening up and really pretty. Also one of the blue spruce that we planted this spring, it was one of the B&B uh, trees. It was near the barn. We planted it, it kind of sunk, like it was, it was planted way too low and we thought well when those guys are out here so handy that they can just dig up a root ball, especially one that's not uh, super established yet, they could either dig it and lift it a little bit in the same spot, but we decided to have them just move it out here to the south garden. We have one more big blue spruce coming. We thought, let's pop that big one right back there. So that is yet to arrive, but the blue spruce is out here and it looks great. Decided to pop it right here in this area where we had the big vertigo grasses and the annuals. I think it'd be really nice to have some winter interest. <laughs> they had already put Christmas lights on it in the back. So it's all ready to go. We just got to get a, uh, an extension cord run to it. It's kind of the perfect spot for it. Gosh, I like those pots being gone. I did not anticipate that, but I really do. Planted up the containers right here in the maize garden, which we're going to retool slightly next year, but the pots may stay in the same spots. So I put Averon tulips in here, which are that darker colored, double, beautiful. And then in the Savannah urns back here, I did the Ake Bano, which are the light pale yellow, but they've got huge flowers. I did 50 in each container. They fit beautifully. There's space between them and everything. So I'm excited about that. And then right up front here in these two great big containers, I planted a mix of the Averon and Angeliques. They should bloom at the same time. It'll be so gorgeous. It's gonna be the dark pink and the light soft pink mix in here. And I thought if I could get my hands on some kind of a, a vine or something in the spring that looks really pretty and kind of weave it down in there because I didn't plant anything right here. I only planted the tulips around here. So to have a little softness right there, I think would be so pretty. And I might even be able to tuck like some white pansies or some little ivy in the uh, on, along the edge there. I just think it's gonna be awesome. And then there's the spruce. Look at that beautiful tree. I wanted to show you the view, like as you're walking into the cut flower garden area or the south garden rather, to the cut flower garden, that made a huge impact on this space. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure exactly how tall that is, but it's a lot taller than all the other things that we have in this area. And there are lots of things that will get tall. You know, we've got three, blue spruce in here. Uh, there's a lot of deciduous going on. There's that Oregon green Austrian pine that will get quite large. There's a spring grove arborvita, which will be what, 20, 25 feet. I mean, eventually this whole area will be full of these big giant specimens, but that is just so pretty. I love how open it is. It's not super, super thick like the spruces are. So I think it's gonna be a really pretty textural difference, but it's just kind of a game changer to the side of the garden. Here's a look from this angle. So you can see the blue spruce. This is a forest pansy redbud. So it has kind of a purple leaf color and then the green. So nice. Okay, pots on the west side. I put uh, 50 Amazing Grace tulips in each one of these containers. It's going to be awesome. And then in the Esplanade urns, I did white parrots, which are a white and green, really, really, really beautiful, unique looking tulips. So I did 25 in each one of these urns. I was pleasantly surprised by how easy the soil was to get out of the containers. I started with some hot water in a watering can trying to moisten the soil and get it softened up, but I kind of found in the, in the end it wasn't really worth it. I could pry most of it out with a shovel. And then in these two wicker pots here, I did, I have to remember here, hang on. I did Dordogne. 
I think. Didn't I do Dornonia up here? I'm pretty sure I did. They're an apricot pink blend. Beautiful tulip. There's 50 in each one of these containers. And then up here we did 50 of the Helalites tulips. They're a really clear yellow. They're really beautiful. And I typically like to put blue pansies around yellow flowers up here. That's what I've done the last at least one or two seasons. Sometimes it's hard to want to do something different when you stumble upon a combination that just makes you so happy. And that blue and yellow in the spring, it's such a bright but peaceful blend. I just love it. So I went with the yellow. We might go in with pink, tool or pink pansies or something like that instead, but we'll see. The rest of everything is back here in the back formal garden. I don't know what to call it now. The North Garden, right? Okay, so first off, you probably saw in the background, and I think Aaron had cameras out on all of this stuff, so you may have already seen, but the um, four trunk crab apple came from back there right up here, and I love it so much. This is gonna be a little bit of an arch. You know, we've got the weeping willow here, and I don't wanna repeat a weeping willow here, although I love this tree. I love it so much but that would be too much. So having some beautiful spring interest here with the blooms, it's a prairie fire, so bright pink. And then we've got some persistent fruit. So these do not fall and make a mess. The birds usually just clean them right up. I think it's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited about it. And it looks pretty with the blue spruce here. And then we've got this maple, which only has a spread. It'll come out like 12 feet from where it's at. So these shouldn't compete too much. They're still working on a couple trees back there. So the crab apple, after they moved it, they came in with the bigger spade and dug the big hole because like I said, this is where one of the big green Colorados is gonna go. But I think it will be a really nice blend to have that here because we've got the black lace there, we've got another deciduous there, and then I'm gonna work in some more deciduous right in front of all of this. So having another evergreen, especially if this Diodora doesn't survive, will be nice. Right now there actually there's I think two trees along with that other blue spruce that just sunk. We dug the holes just a little bit too deep and they're lifting them up for us. And then they're going to come in with the big spade here in a minute and they're going to dig a bigger hole here for a bigger blue spruce. So that little one was right here that ended up up in the south garden. We're going to have a great big one right in here. And that's going to wrap it up for our tree load. Uh, the last load that we picked out at Malad Tree Farm, I can't even remember when that was, but we had to wait like a month or a month and a half to where trees were starting to slow down and he felt comfortable digging and all of that business. Uh, so, and it's, it's safer on the trees, better on the trees, less shock and that sort of thing. So we waited until then, but then they usually just bring one or two trees per day, weather permitting. So. I think this week will be all done. But I'm really happy with the progress on the bulbs. I feel like that was huge and it's gonna look really good in the spring. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.